Hey everyone, today I've got a special treat for you. So I recently interviewed Michael Dougherty, who is a realtor in Norfolk, Virginia, about the benefits of having a realtor who works by referral. And we'll get into what that means in the video. Michael was the number 33 agent uh, by volume in all of the US and number one in Virginia in his state. So he knows what he's talking about. We talked about some of the things that agents who work by referral, uh, some of the things that they do, how it benefits their clients, it makes the overall experience better, and why almost all of his clients have come from people referring him. We'll be talking about what that means, and then uh, there's a lot of things that I learned that I'm gonna continue or will soon be implementing into my practice so that I can uh, continue to raise my game and serve my clients on the same level that Michael does his. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you're in the market for or looking for a real estate agent, um, then this is kind of a good argument of the kind of agent that you should choose. So I hope you enjoy the video. So yeah, Michael, happy to have you here for those of you, which uh, could be many of you who are my clients, not Michael's, um, who are not aware. Michael Dougherty is an agent over in Virginia on the opposite side of the coast. So Michael, can you kind of share a short snippet of, of who you are and um, kind of how you run your business. Oh, well, thanks for having me on, man. Um, yeah, I am a real estate agent in Southeast Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, or some cities people might be familiar with. We have several very large military bases. Um, so a lot of people are transferred to, especially in the Navy, transferred to Norfolk and Virginia Beach. I've been selling real estate for about eight years. I work primarily by referral, probably 99% of my business at this point is repeat referral. Yeah. So one of the things Michael did not share because he's humble is that he's actually last year, I think was what number 33 in all of the U S number one in Virginia yes, by, yep. by volume. Yeah. So obviously something not, um, you know, he's not going around bragging that, but I think for the context, it's important to understand, um, how the value that Michael has provided over time um, has really been seen and evident to the point where people refer him all the time. So 99% of those people have worked with Michael because of what he does. So Michael and I actually share a very similar philosophy. So we are both coached by, um, and I guess technically I'm, I'm actually not being coached right now because I'm actually in a, a training program with a different coach and I need to have a break to make that work. So kind of a different story um, on that, but we both follow that. And I will soon again, be coached by um, the Buffinian company system, um, but still subscribe to their methods, kind of that whole process. And so basically the whole idea is rather than going and chasing leads, going and doing all this other stuff, we provide value to our clients and make our client experience better. Uh, so that, you know, rather than um, investing our time elsewhere, we invest our time in people and it makes, yeah, it makes their whole experience better and um, can also lead to a better life for us as well. So Michael, can you share some of the things that you do that you think maybe some other agents don't do that kind of sets you apart? Yeah, man, well, there's a lot. I mean, there, there's a, a lot, lot. There's a lot of different ways to do real estate. It's just like any other business. Real estate's unique in that, you know, people see what they see on TV and they think that that, that, that is realistic and that's how all real estate goes. And every real estate agent or, or realtor must work that way and work pretty much in a similar fashion, but it's really not the case at all. So just when you first take in a client, the approach is different. You mentioned chasing leads there and the goal of an agent that's chasing a lead and what you're referring to there for the uninitiated is some, an agent who receives a lead from maybe an online source or they pay for it in some fashion. And that's how they meet that person. We don't meet people that way. Um, that may happen very rarely. Every now and then we may get an online um, inquiry that turns into a lead and then turns into a client. But the goal even with that person isn't just to satisfy their immediate need of buying one house or selling one house. The goal with any client is to bring them into what we do in a holistic fashion, let them know from the outset that I do want to help you accomplish your goal here of home ownership or selling this home or both, but that's not the only goal. I want to do this in such a way that you feel so good about it that you want to use me again over and over for the rest of your life every time you move as long as you're in the area and if you move out of the area you still come see me first and i hook you up with somebody nice on the other coast like yourself exactly. um, which is actually kind of how we we met had a referral kind of go back and forth yeah um, which is yep. Kind of funny yep um and then also i do it in such a way that if you know anyone else that's thinking about buying or selling 
you don't want them using anyone else because there's good agents and there's, there's bad agents and you want them to be protected and you, therefore you want them to use me. So that, that's the goal up front is to be a real estate advisor, not just a one-off real estate agent, not just an order taker. Yeah. And one of the things I've found is most people are not used to that or they're not expecting that. And so right. they don't understand um, many times or they don't expect, oh, wait, you're going to continue a relationship with me after the sale. And yeah. what, is, what does that look like? And, um, and finding ways, you know, just because we're aware of the industry, like, well, why would I need a real estate agent if I'm not going to be, you know, I'm hoping to stay here forever. Why would I need, you know, a real estate advisor in my life? So how do you typically address that? Well, people, especially if it's their first home or if they have bought another home from someone else and don't really understand what, what we do, you just have to educate them that this is a big deal. This is a home. It's a single best purchase you can make. It's one of the best investment decisions you can make. Really about the only thing you can, you can do to outperform a home and the way it'll perform as, a, as an investment property long-term is to start a business. And most people just aren't going to do that. It is the single biggest investment you'll ever make in terms of money, but also in terms of time as well. And you do need someone in your corner long-term that can give you advice on what to do with that sometimes the right answer is to keep it and rent it. Sometimes it's not. Um, when they use someone like me, I not only have I bought and sold homes for myself and my family that we've lived in, but I've also invested a lot and helped a lot of other investors. So you just have to educate them on uh, how much more there is to it than just buying this one place that we're going to hang out and live in and enjoy. Yeah. And one of the other things um, that we do is regular contact with people. So even if they're not buying or selling, we stay in touch to make sure, hey, if there's anyone, if there's a professional you need, whether it's a CPA, lender, um, you know, if they're needing to refinance, if it's um, any profession that could be uh, like painting or construction, we have large networks of people that we love to recommend. Are there other things that you do? So you contact your um, people that you worked with in the past kind of on a regular basis too, right? So what are the, some of the things that you talk about and what are the things that they appreciate about when you follow up in that way? Most of it is what you just said. Um, you know, what do they appreciate it, appreciate about it? They appreciate just the phone call because you know, most salespeople just aren't doing that. Like we closed, I'll see you later, lose but never, never call me again, unless you want to give me another paycheck. But that that's just not what we do. I, I was talking to one of my friends slash clients yesterday, and a lot of clients do turn into friends. But literally just called her to say, hey, how's the house? Uh, do you need anything? And she actually did need a referral to a contractor like you just mentioned. Um, I try to, I try to keep people out of, out of like trouble financially, you know, you, you have solicitors that just walk up and down the street in neighborhoods and say, Hey, you looks like you need a new roof or you, you need new windows. And they may not need that. Um, or they may not get a second price. I've said a lot, I've said a lot of clients, tens of thousands of dollars on stuff like that. Hmm. Um, so? but that, well, like some of the, some of the door knocking, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus. But some of the door knocking uh, contracting companies that come through do try to upsell you things you don't necessarily need at this present time, or they try to sell you the absolute best, most expensive version of this product, but again, may not be necessary. Um, it's, I, I literally have examples in my mind right now where, where someone was trying to sell one of my clients windows on their house. And I, I think the charge was like $28,000, oh. which is completely unrealistic. So got them a second price, saved them like 20 grand. Yeah. So day. how are you able to get them? How did it come across that you ended up finding out and were able to save them that instead of them just going through with it? Cause they knew they could call me. Hmm. They knew they could call me and ask me. And, I, and I, I tell them that, um, from the first meeting and I tell them at closing and call me at time. Yeah. I actually tell them I, I sleep when I go to sleep, my phone goes in the bathroom. So I won't even hear it. And if you got some burning question that hits your brain at 3am and wakes you up, Go ahead and send it. You're not going to wake me up. I'll see it when I wake up, but I'd rather you do that than forget. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the kind of example that, um, and it makes it a lot of fun too, like to be able to reach out, help someone out. And then, I mean, that person too, I mean, they think, I mean, how many agents can save you thousands of dollars when you're not even in real estate transaction? Like it's something right. most people don't even think about. And, and that's what makes this a lot of fun for me too, is just being able to to do that and know, Hey, I'm here looking out for people. And that's what I would like to do. And if it results in referrals or more business, great. Um, but yeah. So thanks for sharing. I think that's a, um, 
I think that's great. So one of the other things that is what we would call the Buffini method or the working by referral method is something called the client appreciation program. Mm -hmm. How would you describe that to people? Well, we've touched on some of it now, mm -hmm. but uh, we send out a monthly item of value to the people who we've um, helped buy or sell a house or who will in the future that have reached out to us. Um, so that's part of our constant contact. And that, that has different information, you know, depending on the time of the year, it might be information on uh, retirement planning, um, how interest rates are looking right now, how to protect yourself from identity theft. Those are a few of the topics that are normally covered, I've seen on a regular basis. Um, and then we've already touched on, on regular follow-up. We do client parties um, a couple of times a year just to, you know, establish a better sense of community with our people. And then also, I don't, I don't even advertise this, but I try to do... Um, compared to market, uh, market analysis for people on a pretty regular basis so that we're sending them at least once a year, like, hey, here's how your homes, uh, uh, how your neighbors are selling, like, like what they're selling for and what your home's value is approximately. People like knowing yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And, and one of the things too, that's not really a part of the client appreciation, uh, but I think is specifically for um, a Buffini person and why I have complete comfort and confidence in recommending to one of the agents and there's thousands across the country in almost every single city is I know the character is there. So someone who's going to take their business and work only by building relationships with people, you know, that they're doing it for the right reasons. And that almost, I mean, there's probably some that aren't great, but for the most part, the heart is right. And I think the character of knowing that someone's going to work for your best interests rather yeah. than they're just going to work for a paycheck. You're never going to see them again. Um, I have a lot more trust in that because, Absolutely. you know, I, I know that someone's going to do the right thing because they are like, Hey, if I try to screw someone over, there's no way they're going to refer me. But if you're always mm -hmm. thinking like, Hey, I want to give this person such a great experience so that when the time comes up, they feel comfortable sending me to their friends and family. And it just gives yeah. a different perspective and a higher level of service. And, um, and that's one of the things that's great too. So Michael, um, I appreciate your time. Is there anything else you want to share to anyone maybe buying in the in the Norfolk, Norfolk area or, um, or maybe in the New York, Oregon, Oregon area? <laughs> I would say nationwide, the thing right now that's scaring people is interest rates going up. Mm -hmm. Just so everyone knows, the average interest rate since 1972 is 8.29%. We're, we're not there. We're still not close to that. Interest rates are uh, being increased to combat inflation, and they're going to keep doing that until inflation slows down, and then they'll bring interest rates right uh, back down. Either way, it's still a good time to buy. It's better to buy yesterday than it is tomorrow. Uh, real estate appreciates on average uh, five to six percent, depending depend on what area you are in the country. Uh, year over year, every year, sure it goes down sometimes, but if you look at the last fifty years, it's an increasing curve. If you wait until interest rates come back down next year, two years from now, who knows? You're going to be paying more for that piece of real estate than you would right now. You can buy now, date that rate, refinance it when the rates drop. And you'll still look a whole lot smarter buying in the past than you will in the future. We Our that's an interesting point because we are still technically in a housing shortage, especially over here in the Northwest. Same. Yeah. And you know, the thing is, once interest rates come down, the the buying pressure that's kind of been stopped up, um, people are like, oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off. As soon as interest rates come back down, I mean, it would basically cause the same thing. There'll be bidding wars again, and that'll jack the prices up even higher. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of people maybe think we're in a bubble, but I think that's kind of, um, uh, I, I don't think that's quite the full story. And I know you kind of have the, uh, I saw on it's, Facebook, you and, uh, one of the other agents that said, nah, bro, prices are too high or something like that. That was a buyer. That was a that was, buyer. Oh, that was the yeah. buyer. Oh, okay. That was a buyer. So, so his name is Nicholas. He was referred to me last year and, you know, we're talking about follow-up. That's a real time example of me following up. And I, I called him. He didn't answer. I texted him. This is back in February of 22 this year. And I said, hey, man, I, you know, just want to reach out, follow up with you. Are you still interested in buying a home? And he said, nah, brah, the market is too high right now, which is, <laughs> uh, I think it's Generation Z for uh, no, sir. I'm yeah. not buying a home right now. <laughs> so um, I, I got through talk to them you know everything you and i just talked about that you know it's cheaper now than it will be in the future you can refinance if the rates come down later helped him buy a house and then i made t-shirts of his objectionable text about why he was not ready to buy and i, I gave him one of the t-shirts 
Yeah, me and him wore the t-shirts at closing. <laughs> That's funny. And now, thought... and now he's got a house. He's no longer renting. You know, yeah. I did, I did well by the kid. He's, he's looking good. That's funny. Hey, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> But hey, great talk yeah. to you. Thanks for sharing uh, your wisdom, your expertise. Um, great to see you doing so well over there and showing Thanks, man. that, hey, the market doesn't need it. Um, just because there may be some confusion out there, it doesn't mean that you know the sky is falling or anything like that. Yeah. So I know that you're going to continue serving your clients well. Look forward to sending more business your way if I can. Absolutely, man. Same to you. All right. Take care. Hi, brother. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I hope you got some great value from this video. If you're currently in the market looking for a real estate agent and you want someone who's going to do the right thing by you and also is going to be there after the sale closes to be there and guide you and counsel you uh, through all things related to real estate, give me a call and let's chat. Whether you're moving here to Newburgh, you're selling your home here in Newburgh, or if you've got somewhere across the country you're moving and need a contact, there's a good chance that I've got someone I can connect you with. Uh, I've got people I know all across the country. So my phone number and email are there at the bottom of the screen. So you can either reach out by phone or email, whichever is easiest for you. Well, thank you again for watching. And if there's something you learned that you like, please let me know in the comments section and I'll catch you guys in the next video.